for some time they were discussing something with each other in that meeting. Van Diathevan heard nothing clear as many voices were mixed together. Sam Bavariar said in a loud voice, Shouldn't we reply to what the King of Palyavar has asked? What will happen if we are talking head to head? The third jamam of the night has begun. The moon has also come. I have a suspicion. It may be in the minds of some others as I am. If Pavurthavar is not angry, I would like to hear about it. Camel, who spoke once before, said in his voice. Venangamudiar is speaking now, is he? Let him get up and come into the light. Said the reaper. Yes, it is I who have come into the light. I usually show all my anger on the battlefield, I usually show it to my enemies, I don't show it to my friends. So you can freely ask for anything. Then let me ask, some blame the Palyavataraya for what the Palyavataraya accuses Sundara Chola Maharaja. Even if I don't believe it, I would like to hear it at this time. Said Venangamudiar. What is it? How? Want to elaborate? We all know that Pavurthavar married a girl two years ago. At this time, Sam Bavariyar's voice said in an angry tone, We object to Venangamudiar talking about this matter. It is not at all appropriate to ask our great leader, our chief guest, such an unexpected question. I ask Sam Bavariyar to be patient. Let Venangamudiar listen freely to what he wants to hear. It is better to listen to something than to keep something in mind. It is true that I have married a woman for more than 55 years. I freely admit it. But I have never said that I am Kali Yuga Ramavatara. Ikapathanai is a fasting person. I never told her. I fell in love with that girl and she fell in love with me. We fell in love and got married in the old-fashioned way. What's wrong with that? Not a mistake. Many voices were raised. Nor am I saying that marriage is wrong. Who among us is celibate? But, but... But what? Feel free to listen with an open mind. Some say that Palyavatare listens to the advice of the newly married young queen in all matters. They say that he listens to the young queen's opinion even in royal matters. They say that he takes the young queen with him wherever he goes. Now there was a roar of laughter in the crowd. Sam Bavariyar jumped up and said, Who laughed? Let him come forward at once and tell the reason for laughing. He roared and drew the knife from its sheath. I am the one who laughed. Don't panic Sam Bavaria, said the reaper. Then, Venangamudiyar. Is it a crime to take my married wife with Athali wherever I go? It is true that I take her to many places like that. But it is just a sin to say that I listen to the queen's opinion on royal matters. I never do that. Then, I pray to Pavurthavar to resolve just one more doubt. Why has the palanquin, which should have been in that temple, come to the place of our private meditation. Is there anyone inside the palanquin, or not? If not, where did the sound of pouring and the banging of bangles that we heard a moment ago come from? When Venangamudiyar heard this, there was a strange silence in the crowd. As the same thought and question appeared in the minds of many people, no one immediately had the courage to speak against the worshipper. Sam Bavarier's lips murmured something but he did not hear a word from his mouth. Breaking the silence, Palyavatarayar said to Ganir, a fair question, I am obliged to answer. I will clear your doubts before this meeting breaks up. May I not wait half an hour more? Do you not have that much faith in me? There is, there is we have perfect faith in the reaper. Many voices shouted. Let no one think that I have less devotion and respect for the punisher than the others. I listened because he told me to open my heart and listen. Otherwise, I am willing to carry out his orders. Even if I am asked to give my life at this moment, I will. Dr. Venangamudi said. I know the mind of Venangamudiyar. I also know the trust you all have in me. So let's first decide what we have gathered for today. May Sundara Chola Maharaja Niduza live in this world and rule this Chola Empire. But maybe if something happens to him, if he fulfills the promise of the doctors, then Dumakatu, 
who has been appearing for a few days, if the productions etc. are successful, then we have to decide who deserves the title of this Chola Empire. We ask for their opinion on the matter. There is no one in this meeting who can speak against their opinion. Therefore, for the good of the kingdom, the ministers, the vassals, the small land kings, the city leaders and the chieftains thought together and crowned Parintaka Sundara Chola. No one should be upset about that. Because the Sundara Chola Maharaja was ruling the country with integrity until two years ago. He respected all of us and listened to our ideas. Due to this the Chola kingdom expanded and prospered. Now Sundara Chola Maharaja's health is in critical condition. Who is next in line in this situation? Madhurand Hakar, the son of Kandarada Deva, is now able to come to Prayam and take care of the kingdom. Aditha Kari Kalar, one year younger than him, was the commander of the Northern Army at Kanchi, the son of Sundara Chola. Which of these two is right to come to the title? What is clan system? What is petition justice? What is the oldest tradition of Tamil Nadu? Is it fair for the elder's son to come to the title of Madhurandakar? Or is it customary for the youngest to inherit the title? Each of you must speak your mind, which of these two is right to come to the title? What is clan system? What is petition justice? What is the oldest tradition of Tamil Nadu? Is it fair for the elder's son to come to the title of Madhurandakar? Or is it customary for the youngest to inherit the title? Each of you must speak your mind, which of these two is right to come to the title? What is clan system? What is petition justice? What is the oldest tradition of Tamil Nadu? Is it fair for the elder's son to come to the title of Madhurandakar? Or is it customary for the youngest to inherit the title? Each of you must speak your mind. Madhurandhakar, the son of the elder Kandaratitheva, deserves the title. That is justice. Dharma, system, said Sambhavarayar. That's my opinion, that's my opinion, said everyone in the crowd. Your opinion is my opinion. The title belongs to Madhurandhagar. But are each of us willing to work hard to establish that right? Are we willing to fight and fight physically and spiritually? Are we willing to swear at the feet of Durga Devi and make such a vow at this moment? When Palyavatarayar asked that, his voice was full of passion that was not there before. There was silence in the crowd for a while. Then Sambhavarayar said, We are willing to take the oath as God's witness. But before taking the oath, you must clarify one thing. What is the opinion of Prince Madhurandhagar? Is he willing to mount the throne and accept the royal burden? We hear that the penitent son of Kandaratatha hates the worldly life and is fully engaged in devotion to Shiva. He has no desire for the kingdom. We have also heard many people say that his mother, Sembian Matthew Iyar, is completely against her son's coming to the title. We want to know the truth about this from you. The right question, you asked at the right time. I have a duty to clarify this. I should have told you earlier. Sorry for not telling you, Palyavatarayar began to say. It is known to the country that Sembian Mathavi was trying to turn his only son away from his desire for kingdom and to devote him to the path of Shiva Bhakti. But the country does not know the reason for this, neither do the people. The reason is that the great Pratiyar was afraid that his life might be in danger if Madhurandhakar's desire for kingdom was known. Wow! Really? Voices rose in the crowd. Yes. The birth mother's desire for her child to be alive is greater than her only son's desire to ascend the throne? Madhurandhagar, who regarded his mother's voice as the voice of the goddess, had set his mind on the path of despair. He was fully engaged in Shiva devotion. But for some time his mind had changed little by little. The idea that this Chola empire belongs to him and it is his duty to maintain it is rooted in his mind. If you all support him he is ready to come forward and say it publicly at the right time. What is the evidence for this? I will now give proof that will satisfy you all. Are you all willing to take the oath? Many voices chanted we are. We are. They sounded. No other doubt in anyone's mind. No. No. Then here I bring the evidence. 
I will clear the doubts of Dr. Venangamudi right now. Saying that, the Reaper got up. Walking majestically, he approached the closed palak which had recently been placed there. Prince! Pull back the veil of the palanquin and rise forth. Give sight of your face to these warriors who are willing to sacrifice their bodies and souls for themselves. He said in a very humble voice. Van Diathevan, who had been sitting in the pillar cover upstairs and listening with deep interest without uttering a word, now looked down cautiously. A hand removed the palanquin curtain as before. It is a golden hand. He was blushing the same crimson he had seen once before. But now he saw that what he had thought was a bangle was actually a bangle worn by royal sons. The next moment, the golden face was visible along with the full moon. A beautiful figure with Cupid came out from the palanquin and stood smiling. Aha! This is Prince Madhurandagara, the son of Kandaratatha Deva. Did we make that mistake because we wanted to be a woman because we were inside the Palak? Vandiyathevan looked to see if all were Kadayan, who had made the same mistake as him, was stretching his head over the wall. Below this, long live modern Dakathivar. Long live crown prince. Victory! Victory! There were furious shouts. Vandiyadeva saw all the people in the crowd standing up and holding their swords and work up high and chanting like that. Thinking that it might be dangerous to stay there any longer, he hurried to the place where he was lying and lay down.